So joining us today from WSO2 is John Donji, and Donji is a uh, technical lead with WSO2. And um, he's going to be working on microservices project using Ballerina. So Donji is first going to review WSO2's technology quickly and then the hackathon challenge. So without further delay, please give your undivided attention to Donji. Donji, go ahead. Uh, do we have my screen shared? Ah, oh, nice. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Danji. Uh, you can call me Danji. I'm a compiler engineer working in the Ballerina language team. In today's session, I'll first give you a brief introduction to the Ballerina language and then show you how to write a small service and deploy it on Docker, since you guys will be creating a microservice in Ballerina. So Ballerina is an open source programming language for the cloud that makes it easier to use, uh, combine, and create network services. Barina uh, uh, services uh, looks like they are written in a DSL actually, uh, but Barina provides scalability, safety, and tooling support of a general purpose programming language on top of that uh, DSL like syntax. From the type system to execution model, Barina is designed to be a cloud native programming language. Barina has tooling support that enables generating containerized artifacts for Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, Barina is designed to be easy to learn, uh, leveraging common language subset from popular languages like uh, C, Java, TypeScript, etc. On top of that subset, Ballerina provides more uh, ways to be productive and be per, uh, secure when you are developing programs for the cloud. Let's look at some high-level features of Ballerina. We believe that it's we believe that it's much easier to program the network interactions with plain data rather than having behavior attached to them. But uh, Ballerina do have object-oriented features, such as classes, uh, virtual dispatch, and type inheritance. However, we encourage developers not to overuse them. Uh, JSON and XML are native types in Ballerina, and plain data from uh, coming over the network uh, straightforwardly maps to JSON type in Ballerina. Uh, I'll show that in the demo. Uh, Ballerina has powerful features to work with data, uh, language integrated queries with SQL-like syntax for easy, easy data wrangling, table data type to make it easy to work with tabular or relational data, XML support with uh, XQuery-like syntax for navigating the XML values, and also decimal type uh, to for sort of decimal, uh, precise decimal calculations. Ballerina's type system is structural, meaning uh, only the shape of the type matters, not the like the name doesn't really matter. This, this gives more flexibility to the developer while providing safety and the tooling support of a static type system. Similar to a dynamically, similar to a dynamically typed language, Ballerina performs runtime type checks when applicable and avoids possible data corruptions. You can uh, switch to nominal type as well. It's called distinct types in Ballerina and uh, it's useful when you are doing domain modeling. Uh, when it comes to concurrency, Ballerina provides a lightweight threading model similar to Go and Kotlin. This allows concurrent execution of code that uh, looks like simple blocking code, but actually they are concurrent under the hood. They don't block the operating system thread. Outbound network interactions are represented by uh, something called client objects. Uh, they have remote methods to represent the outbound interactions and a distinct syntax to call those remote methods. So we know uh, what's a regular method invocation and what's a network interaction just by looking at the code. If you look at the, the, the code in the screen, you'll see that uh, the SC, then there's an arrow and send mail. So this indicates that send mail is a network interaction. Inbound network interactions are represented by something called service objects. And libraries provide protocol specific listeners and they translate incoming messages into method invocations on those service objects. 
Palerina Standard Library has listeners for TCP, uh, HTTP, gRPC, WebSocket, uh, directory listeners, etc. Size objects support two interface styles. Uh, one called remote methods, that is uh, for RPC-like interactions, and one called resource methods for uh, resource-oriented interactions like uh, RESTful, OHTTP, and uh, GraphQL. And uh, errors are an everyday thing when you are dealing with the network. So the 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 exceptions, the those errors are not exceptional enough to be control flow exceptions. So Palina has uh, error return similar to uh, Go and Swift. And we have language construct to help it easier to work with those errors. Uh, we do have exceptions as well. They are called panics. And uh, uh, they are for exceptional conditions only. Uh, then for the tooling, we have a VS Code plugin with uh, lots of ID features and debugging support. We have tools to work, uh, work with OpenAPI, GraphQL, gRPC, et cetera. Uh, for example, if you write a service, you can simply generate the OpenAPI for that service. Uh, we have easy interoperability with Java. Uh, Balana is a JVM language at the moment. And uh, we provide tools to generate bindings from any Java library to Ballerina so that you can call that uh, Java library from Ballerina. Uh, Ballerina have a module repository called Ballerina Central uh, to host and consume third party modules. And uh, Ballerina support a built in observability. In summary, Ballerina is a modern industrial grade programming language optimized for writing integration in a cloud native environment. And it has a type system designed to make network uh, interactions easier. We have first class network services along with functions and objects. And Ballerina is a fully open source. It's uh, developed in the open. If, uh, to get started learning Ballerina, just go to ballerina.io and start reading the Ballerina by example pages. If you come up with any mm -hmm. issues, you can just uh, contact us in the Ballerina platform Slack channel. So now I'll just uh, show you creating a small service in Ballerina and uh, deploy it on the Docker. Uh, for a simple Ballerina program, you can just run the, the, the single bal file as well. But uh, since we are planning to deploy this on Docker, we'll be creating a module, Ballerina module, uh, the Ballerina module uh, can hold uh, more configurations. So that's why we are creating a module here. Uh, to create a Ballerina module, you just uh, use the bal command. You use bal command for everything. Uh, to create a module, you say bal new and a module name. In this case, service. So uh, Ballerina module is uh, just a collection of Ballerina files. And uh, there's a, a special file called ballerina.toml. It's a configuration file that uh, holds configurations about this particular module. And we can also have submodules in this uh, module. To add a, create a, or add a submodule, we'll say, I'll add and the submodule name. But I'm not going to create a submodule here, as uh, we don't need that for this simple case. I'll open this module in the VS Code. We already have, and uh, this is just a template that Bell new command created. Just a hello world program. Uh, bring to the console. We don't need this. Remove that one. Uh, the ID provides uh, snippets for various constructs. Uh, one is for services, and we can use a snippet to create HTTP service. So this method imported the Ballerina HTTP module and created a simple skeleton. Uh, so here, service, then forward slash. Here we can specify the base path, base path of the service. So in the, uh, for this scenario, I'm going to use the slash or the root path. Then uh, we have new, uh, we have new up a new listener, HTTP listener. 
uh, opening uh, listening on port 880. Uh, we don't need this bit here. Now we have a resource function and there's two names here. First one is called the method. This corresponds to the HTTP method. Uh, the second one is the path that this method will serve on. We can use dot to specify that this method should serve on the base path. And we can have a return, return type. In this case, I will say string. And I'm going to return hello world. Compile and run this code. Uh, how do we run this? By run. If we are in the service, we can just say by run and the, the bell command knows that we need to run the current module. So we are we're gonna send a request to 8080. It's a get request. And there's no path. It says hello world. Uh, what if we want to send some information in? Like there are a few options in uh, in HTTP. One is to use the uh, the the URL uh, to, uh, like this. In that case, we can have two and bar be parameters to this uh, method that we want this them to be passed. Then there's another option, uh, query strings. Uh, then we can use the the body of the request. Then we can use the head of the request. We can we uh, Balana support everything. So let me show you uh, how to get the path as a parameter. Say do something like this. We we need a, a resource called name, and we can provide a name here as a second part. Yes. We're going to need a source function and we're going to serve on get method and we're going to hash. Now we can have a parameter here. The name. I'm going to return that. Okay. So run this and send a request to name slash anything. The anything will be a value passed to this parameter and we can use that. Set needs. Uh, then similarly we can uh, pass JSON. Uh, let me show another option we have. I'm just going to copy paste something. Uh, here, uh, we're going to receive a JSON payload as a from the body of the request and just uh, return the same thing. So it will be restarting the server. It's on the path JSON echo, it's a post request. Post request. Uh, we got the JSON and we return the same. We also support data binding. Uh, that is, uh, if the if the input we know the input, the shape, the input, and we have a type that uh, we would like to be populated. We can simply uh, provide that type here instead of uh, JSON. We can provide that type, uh, and if the request have this particular data, it will be bound to that. Otherwise, it will be an error. So let me show you such thing. So we have this type. The type that is. Uh, a JSON with a string name and a list of uh, ins called grades.
we can have a method like this. So this will receive a student yes, as a JSON from the HTTP payload and it will uh, manipulate that JSON and uh, as a student course, and return a JSON. So, okay. Let me just like the server. So it uh, bump the grades by ten, and then uh, calculate the average. Uh, now I'll show you how to deploy this on Docker. It's pretty easy. What you have to do is uh, you have to provide the image information in a file called cloud. And let me copy paste the information I have created. So we'll have to create the repository and the name and the tag. Then have anything running at the moment uh, to the build command we can say uh, we need, need to generate the cloud artifacts so we say we say that we need to create the docker artifact so uh, this will take a bit of time because uh, we need to copy some libraries to create the the Docker image. So we have the Docker file. Let's run that and see. It's running on 880, so we can test it like this. It's working. So that's how you deploy it on Docker. Uh, and also, uh, you can also generate uh, artifacts for Kubernetes, Kubernetes as well to say okay, it is. And it will generate the Kubernetes artifacts. So this concludes the demo. And if you have any questions, it's, it's time to raise them. Yeah, Donji, it looks like there's one question from Carnegie. It is, is IP uh, uh, VX, IP version six, supported within no, uh, network interactions? Yes. We, uh, at the moment, under the hood, Ballerina uh, is uh, relying, for the network interactions, we are relying on the NETI. So we do support IPv6. Okay, great. Um, it looks like there doesn't have any other questions. I'm gonna leave it open just for a few more moments. If anybody wanted to, um, I put in a question in the Q and A section while I'm finishing up here with the uh, post webinar housekeeping. Um, we'll, we'll circle back for Q and A. Um, first of all, uh, Donji, thanks for the great presentation. Um, last minute housekeeping items um, for all hackathon participants to contact um, you. Where would they contact you for a uh, question, Donji, um, as they're working through the challenge? Is there an email, a Slack channel? Uh -huh. 
Uh, we, we have the Ballerina Slack channel. Uh, just okay. uh, if you just search Ballerina Slack channel, you can ask questions. Like it's there, so you can ask questions there. Okay, uh, that's, so the, anybody, that's the fastest way to get in. Okay. in clarify. Got it. So anybody who has questions relating to the WSO2 uh, uh, hackathon challenge uh, should be contacting um, uh, WSO2 through the ballerina-platform.slack.com with any questions. Again, also you can search for ballerina slash WSO2 or ballerina. Um, on Slack. Um, the There is a recording of this particular webinar that will be made available in the next few hours to those people who pre-registered um, who maybe didn't get a chance to make it. Um, but for those who are participating, you might want to forward this on to your team teammates um, who are potentially working with you on the hackathon challenge.